1933, environmental disasters ravaged the United States. Improper land use and drought caused devastating dust storms in the Midwest. In the Southeast, torrential rains bring floods and extraordinary soil erosion. Adding to the nation's misery, the economic disaster of the Great Depression leaves 25% of Americans unemployed. Out of work and out of ideas, the nation turns to a new leader. Shortly after his inauguration, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt implements a plan to fix both the economy and the land. His New Deal program creates new government agencies, including the Tennessee Valley Authority. On October 1st, 1933, TVA gets to work on its first major project, Norris Dam. The dam is named after Senator George Norris of Nebraska, who was a staunch supporter of TVA. Norris Dam would control flooding, create recreational opportunities, and bring electricity to rural areas. The dam would affect five counties in the Norris Reservoir. TVA purchases homesteads throughout the vicinity and begins relocating its residents. Nearly 3,000 families would leave behind their homes, churches, and memories of simpler times. The thing that hurts so bad was that we just didn't want to be taken away from the place we love. Now it's 100 feet underwater. We can never go home again. Evelyn Hill Longmire. But as tradition gave way to progress, new infrastructure projects would arise. To accommodate the workers needed to build the dam, TVA develops the model city of Norris. In November 1934, President Roosevelt and First Lady Eleanor visit the Norris Dam construction site, recognizing the important accomplishments of the project's workers. As part of the Norris Dam project, new demonstration parks would be created. The parks would be built to improve community health and boost tourism. To help build these parks, TVA looked to another New Deal agency, the Civilian Conservation Corps. The Civilian Conservation Corps, or CCC, would provide much needed employment to thousands of young men and World War I veterans. Unmarried men between the ages of 17 and 25 could enroll in the CCC, giving them a chance to make a living and learn new skills. CCC units were overseen by Army officers and operated much like military units. But Roosevelt's Tree Army had a different mission land conservation and erosion control. In a radio address to America, President Roosevelt spoke about the establishment of the CCC. And in creating this civilian conservation corps, we are killing two birds in one stone. We are clearly enhancing the value of our natural resources, and at the same time, we are relieving an appreciable amount of actual distress. And we are conserving not only our natural resources, but also our human resources. In October 1934, two CCC units arrived at Norris. Company 4495 would build Big Ridge Park, while Company 284 would build barracks and other structures at Norris Park. But on a frigid December night, disaster would strike Company 284. An overheated stove catches fire, spreading quickly through the barracks. Three CCC enrollees die in the blaze. The following year, survivors of the fire would be reassigned to a new CCC unit, the 4493rd. This company would build structures throughout the park, including 20 rustic cabins for future park visitors. They would also construct a public lodge which served as a restaurant, supply store, meeting place, and dance hall. Now known as the Tea Room, it remains a beautiful example of CCC craftsmanship. In 2014, these magnificent structures would be added to the National Register of Historic Places. The 4493rd would also relocate a historic grist mill from Union County. 
TVA had purchased the 1798 Rice Family Mill to save it from being destroyed by the Norris Dam Reservoir. Carefully labeling each board and brick, the CCC dismantled the mill, reassembling it next to scenic Clear Creek in Norris Park. With their work complete at Norris, the 4493rd would go on to build Cove Lake Park in 1937. By March 1936, Norris Dam was complete. Two months later, Norris Park would open to the public. The CCC presence at Norris Park continued to grow with the arrival of Company 494. Under the direction of the Forest Service, the majority of these enrollees would plant hundreds of tree seedlings every day to help control soil erosion. Along with trees, they were ordered to cultivate another plant. As an answer to the erosion menace, Congress introduced a miracle plant from Japan, a hardy vine called kudzu. The plants did control soil erosion, some might say a bit too well. Just below the dam, the CCC would build a fish hatchery to raise trout for the Clinch River. At the end of the workday, Company 494 would return to Camp DeWitt Kinchin, named in memory of one of their members who had drowned in a boating accident. The camp was located on the former Longmire property and included dormitories, dining areas, an infirmary, and a recreation hall for off-duty hours. Enrollees enjoyed movies at the amphitheater and would gather around the flagpole each morning for revelry. The camp also housed vehicle maintenance buildings, including stone oil change facilities. In 1940, Polk County native Claude Jenkins would join Company 494. He worked in the supply area, issuing uniforms to new enrollees and delivering lunches to crews at work sites around the park. In his spare time, he learned to type in the camp's education center. But as World War II began, Jenkins left the CCC, joining the Marines. With America's priorities now on a wartime footing, the Civilian Conservation Corps would be permanently disbanded in 1942. But the buildings, trails, and other infrastructure improvements created by the CCC would serve the park for decades to come. In 1953, it was established as Norris Dam State Park. By the 1970s, additional hiking trails, modern cabins, and other recreational facilities would be built on the land west of the dam. In the 1980s, TVA would turn over the marina area to the park. And in 2011, volunteers and park personnel began to unearth the remains of Camp Kinchin, revealing building foundations, stone stairways, and the central flagpole area where CCC enrollees would gather each day. Camp Kinchin and other structures throughout the park stand as a testament to the CCC mission of conservation and cultural preservation. The traditions, values, and spirit of the Civilian Conservation Corps live on at Norris Dam State Park, where visitors can enjoy musical performances and attend educational events at the Lenore Museum, view artifacts from a bygone era, heirlooms of lives and places transformed by the March of Progress, discover the rich diversity of the park's wildlife and natural resources. Create enduring memories to share with future generations. Norris Dam State Park, built for the people of the United States of America, with the help of the Civilian Conservation Corps.